Dungeons and Dragons is a beautiful th It's a beautiful th It's D&D is terrible and gross. In order to understand how this atrocity happened, we must travel back aeons ago to 1990, where an ambitious and inexperienced 19-year-old named Courtney Solomon went up to TSR, the then owners of D&D, and asked if he could have $100 million to make a D&D movie. He rolled a nat 20 on a persuasion check, and so the DM that is called The Universe was forced to make TSR say, yeah, sure, I don't know. So Solomon went on a quest to find a director good enough for the film, but TSR pulled an oopsie and went bankrupt, selling D&D to Wizards of the Coast, who for some reason hated the idea of making a D&D movie and hated Solomon even more. So they pulled a fun little prank on him where they sued Solomon, gave the film a very short completion deadline or else he would lose the rights to the movie and slashed his budget to $36 million. Also, they made him direct the movie and only allowed him to use an old version of the script. And bred from this evil and hate, in the year 2000, a child of chaos was born. But while babies are 95% poops and crying, there's always something beautiful on the inside. For the D&D movie, that thing is Jeremy Irons. Let their blood rain from the sky! But we'll get to him later. We must first start at the beginning. The movie begins with a way too long voiceover about how the Empress of Izmir believes wizards and muggles should be equal. Right as I was about to fall asleep, the sound of Jeremy Irons muttering woke me right up. He tries to make a magic dragon stick, but oops, it doesn't work, so he has to get another dragon stick, which the Empress has. Then we cut to some level one rogues named Ripley and Snails, who decide to break into the magic school. Then we cut once more to the Imperial Senate where Jeremy is trying to convince them to remove the scepter from the Empress. Just like Solomon before him, he rolls a nat 20 and all the magic men agree to take it from her. Jeremy's personal assistant, Damodar, is sent to kill the Empress's mentor and recover a third dragon stick, but only completes half the assignment, so Jeremy tells him he's on thin ice. The rogues are caught by some librarian mage named Marina who casts Hold Person on them, goes to help her already dead friend, grabs the map to the dragon rod, and casts what in 5e would probably be Gate, meaning that she's a level 8 wizard. They fall into the world's tallest dwarf who decides to tag along. After some very lucky sleuthing, they determine with the map that the only way to get the rod is to first go and get something called the Eye of the Dragon, which is located in some thieves guild run by some guy named Xylus. Thanks to the power of money, they decide to get the dragon wand before Tamadar can get to it and form the Fellowship of the Rod. And, oop, what's that? A mysterious figure is tracking them in the woods. Once in the city that houses the Thieves' Guild, they meet this thief who likes to go like... And this is the best moment of the movie. They follow him into the Thieves' Guild, where, in order to get the eye, Ridley must first pull an Indiana Jones and do some tomb raiding in uncharted territory, which he does and is then betrayed by Xylus. But fortunately, Damodar shows up and a battle between thieves and evil mages breaks out where Marina, the level 8 wizard, is captured by Damodar instead of the level 1 rogues. Oh, and also Damodar gets the map to the dragon rod. After escaping the skirmish, they are captured by the mysterious woman, and she is wearing armor that I in no way feel comfortable showing on YouTube. We find out that this lady works for the Empress and is trying to track down Damodar. A truce is formed and they head off to Damodar's castle where apparently only the two thieves are able to enter for some reason. Of course, Damodar kills snails and Ripley says, <sighs> and is stabbed to near death. But with the power of elves, he gets cured and eventually heads to a cave where he finally gets the Wand of Red Dragons. But surprise, surprise, Damodar is there and takes the rod. Meanwhile, in Izmir, war has broken out between the Empress, who has her gold dragons, and Jeremy Irons, who just has a couple of catapults. Sadly, Jeremy is losing until Damodar shows up to give Jeremy the rod. He summons a bunch of red dragons, which gives him the upper hand. Although technically, gold dragons are more powerful than red dragons. That's too hard, I feel like. <laughs> this sounds so wet. 
Ridley fights Damodar, throwing him off the tower, and with unquenched bloodlust, Ridley goes for Mr. Irons next, and promptly starts to lose. But thanks to his friends getting beat up, distracting Jeremy, Ridley grabs the rod, destroys it, and just in time, the Empress shows up. Mr. Irons casts powerful magic on the Empress, but then Jeremy mutters some weird stuff for so long that he gets distracted and eaten by a dragon. And then that dragon does a sick little dive off the tower, the second best moment of the movie. And finally, we conclude with the Empress declaring that you are all now equal, solving all inequality ever. The end. So, um, is the movie good? Well, the plot feels like a mediocre basic game of D&D, so maybe that's a win. It's kind of like an AI wrote the most generic plot for a game about dungeons and dragons. And there are moments where you can almost feel like the DM is trying to pad out the session with meaningless roadblocks because the players are just blasting through the story. But hey, plot isn't everything. On the bright side, the CGI is bad. Um, but I mean, the movie came out in 2000. CGI wasn't that good back then. Well, they had 93 million and Solomon only had 36 million to work with. Okay, well, how about the practical effects? See, it's also bad. Okay, well, I mean, it's about as good as the original Star Wars trilogy, right? Huh. Okay, well, A New Hope had a huge budget of 11 million dollars. And it came out 23 years earlier? All right, um, so overall the plot, effects, and acting of most of the cast is not great, um, but there is a shining beacon of hope in this mess of a movie, and that is our good friend Jeremy Irons, aka Profion. In a movie that takes itself pretty seriously, Mr. Irons is great comedic relief every time he hams it up on screen. <laughs> And on my own. Good. You carry on and your rage. Aim for the wind, you fool! But you'll never run far enough! Fire your fool! Fire! Oh. 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 The only reason he took the role was because he needed the money to renovate his castle, but I'm so glad he did. Every time he appears on screen, I knew that I was about to receive a healthy dose of ridiculous, over-the-top acting, and sometimes you really need that. So should you watch this movie? No, definitely not, unless you really love schlocky movies or Jeremy Irons. There's a D&D movie just around the corner, so I would wait for that. Wait a minute. What about honor amongst thieves? Do you honestly believe that I could have amassed the wealth that I have if I worried about honor? Oh, no, 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 no. What does this mean? If you enjoyed, feel free to like and subscribe. And if you want to play D&D yourself, look at our description for the video for a link and you can sign up to play a game of D&D. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time.